So welcome to this uh, presentation, uh, Sadilar bringing digital skills and resources to humanities and social sciences. To, uh, to give you a bit of background uh, on digital humanities in South Africa, I'll give a, a really short uh, history. So looking at what was uh, going on, so this started around the year 2000, there was really an, an initial focus on uh, digitization uh, mostly of uh, language resources, but also uh, modalities such as music. Um, at around the same time, just a, a few years later, you could also see uh, the field of computational linguistics uh, emerge. So, for example, in 2004, the Center for Text Technology was founded at the Northwest University, but other universities were also working on um, research in the field of computational linguistics. Um, there was also um, uh, an, an organization that tried to collect resources, computational linguistic resources, called the National Center for Human Language Technology, which in uh, 2012 was renamed to the uh, Resource Management Agency. And this uh, agency essentially collected the computational lingu linguistic resources and tools uh, that were available at that time. So around 2014, you could actually see uh, several digital humanities uh, activities uh, being organized. So these were kind of separate from the um, from the digitization and from the computational linguistics uh, area. So for example, Northwest University organized uh, a digital humanities awareness symposium and a uh, first national workshop. University of Pretoria organized a symposium and Durban University uh, awarded the best digital humanities two awards. Uh, so this kind of this this work kind of uh, led to the uh, the founding of the of DASA, the Digital Humanities Association of Southern Africa, in 2016, and this organization joined ADO in 2018. You can find more information on that uh, URL there. Now, in uh, 2016, the government realized that um, a more structured approach was needed, and Sadilar was founded. So Sadler stands for the South African Center for Digital Language Resources and is directly funded by the Department of Science and Innovation. So this is done within a larger, um, a larger program, the SARIR program, stands for the South African Research Infrastructure Roadmap. Now this uh, organization, so Sadler, is uh, consists of several, uh, a collaboration of several other organizations. So there's a hub located at Northwest University uh, with 11 researchers for each of the official languages. But it's a collaboration also with other nodes. So Northwest University C-Text is a node that deals with text technology. ISELDA is a multi-organization uh, organization, organization <laughs> uh, dealing with language testing. University of Pretoria deals with digitization of language resources. University of South Africa uh, deals with the terminology and the development of word nets. A CSIR is our speech node, and Stellenbosch University uh, deals with child language. So there's a range of organizations, and together make up uh, Sadilar. Okay, now Sadilar actually runs two programs. One is a digitization program, which uh, aims to create um, resources, so collections of text, speech, and multimodal uh, a collection. Uh, digitizes analog resources, but also collects uh, digitally born uh, resources. Uh, so these resources are, are collections of data, but they're also development of tools that can be used to analyze uh, different texts, for example. Um, uh, in addition to uh, the creation of these, uh, these resources, on Sadler website, there's the repository of the available tools and collections, but also there are uh, several online tools that can be used directly there. So there's a corpus portal. There are some tools that allow for the analysis of text, for example, the Voyant tools or some machine translation between South African languages. But here we're more interested in the other program, the Digital Humanities Program. So the aim of that program is to build digital humanities uh, research capacity uh, in South Africa. So one of the things that, that has been done in the past is to org that Sadler organizes training events to get this uh, organized, but there are also other opportunities 
to uh, apply, for example, for uh, projects or for funding of projects. Okay, now these, these training events um, were actually organized at several different universities. So this is a South African wide uh, program. So we try to get uh, this research capacity at all the different universities in, in South Africa. So several um, events have been organized and they were organized mostly by the researchers at the, Sudder, uh, at the Sudler Hub at Northwest University. And these events were open to uh, essentially everybody interested. So researchers, but also students from, from different fields who are interested in becoming active in the field of digital humanities. So at these uh, e training events, different topics were discussed, so data analysis and annotation tools, digital humanities per se, but also corpus creation, the existing uh, computational linguistic tools, and also the carpentries uh, are part of that. So they deal mostly with more general computational topics. So in, in general, these training events were actually quite uh, successful. They were well attended and people really enjoyed being there. They really had the feeling that they were learning uh, much. Uh, however, we also realized that these training events uh, that were organized have, have limitations. So the main limitation is that there are no follow-ups. So there's a training event, people attend this event, and then they, they go away again. There is no building up on the knowledge that were uh, that was already learned at these events. So they were, they were actually quite ad hoc. There's also a limited focus on the South African context. So these are kind of general uh, events that don't specifically aim at the South African languages or the South African culture. They were kind of general in a way. Um, more importantly, the impact of these events is unclear. So it's unclear whether the participants to these events, uh, most of them were lecturers, whether they actually teach the material that they've learned during these events. Uh, but also on the research side, we don't actually know if the participants to these training events use the learned skills and knowledge uh, in their own kind of daily research. Um, and another issue is that uh, the participants, even the ones who are very active and want to use this in their, um, in their research and in their education, they don't really have a possibility of getting help after this training. Like I said, it's a mostly ad hoc event. So they go to this event, they go away again, but if they're struggling with a tool, if they want to do something new, something additional in, in the tools that they've learned, they don't really know where to go uh, and where, where to get help. So this is a, a, a strong limitation of the, uh, the training events that were organized. Okay, so to resolve this, uh, we've been thinking of organizing or kind of restructuring this, these training events. And we've done that by, by um, essentially starting a new, new training program. So the idea is that we rethink the ad hoc uh, training events. We try to have training events that kind of build on top of each other. So you can actually go through several training events, see the same tools and skills. Uh, so reuse the skills that you've learned in, in, in certain events and actually build on the skills that you already have. By doing this, we can also take in specific South African language and culture um, examples. Also, once people start using these tools, we can actually take their uh, results, so their uh, research uh, outputs and use that as, as material. Uh, we can also focus more on the interdisciplinarity. So we want to uh, get the collaboration between people from different fields, say from, from computing and humanities or social science and let them work together. And there are several other aspects that, that we can um, try to fix using this uh, new training program by actually having a more structured approach compared to the ad hoc um, uh, event. So we want to develop a more co comprehensive program versus the ad hoc events that we had in the past. Thank you, Menu. The program that Menu is referring to is called the Escalator Program and started at the end of 2020. It's currently funded for just under two and a half year and will run until March 2023. The aim of Escalator is to support the development of an inclusive and active community of practice in digital humanities and computational social sciences in South Africa. As Menu referred to during his talk, we already know that there are existing communities 
performing digital humanities and computational social sciences research in the South African context. But the problem still exists that many people still don't know how to get started or how to connect to these people. What we want to do with Escalator is to highlight the work that is being done by existing groups and provide opportunities for people to connect to resources and other communities to learn from and grow their skills. To identify the activities that we need to do to achieve this outcome, we created a theory of change and a logical framework, which are both online and you can access it on Zenodo. The activities that we'll focus on in Escalator includes needs assessments throughout the program, running various events, including awareness creation events and those focused on capacity development, creating a digital champions program, which I'll speak about just now, engaging with stakeholders beyond those in humanities and social sciences, creating a regional stakeholder map to help people know who is in the community and how to connect with them, providing de de dedicated opportunity for interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary conversation and collaboration, supporting the development of research projects and proposals with digital and computational focuses, and making sure that people are aware of opportunities available through the Escalator program by disseminating via our website and other platforms, as well as through scholarly articles and present presentations at conferences. Throughout all of this, we will monitor the program and make sure that the activities that we engage in are achieving the goals that we set out to do. I want to focus a little bit on the Digital Champions Initiative because that's one of our flagship activities. The Digital Champions Initiative is a mentorship opportunity for individuals wanting to learn how to apply digital and computational skills in their own research. It will be customized to, to suit local context, but we'll definitely learn from existing mentorship programs. The project, the Digital Champions Initiative will extend support, provide extended support for individuals to grow awareness, skills, their networks, and to develop leadership roles in the community. We're very aware that there are a wide variety of people in our humanities and social sciences community, people who are more familiar and confident with the use of digital and computational practices in research, and people who are just setting out. To accommodate this diversity in our community, we are developing a multi-track program enabling a broader attack audience to attend. The Explorer track will be an unstructured track that allows for people who are not exactly sure what is digital scholarship. The Embarker track is a more structured approach and will be open to people who can dedicate time over a period of a few months to learn specific skills that is useful in digital research. The Enhancer track is more advanced and focuses on helping people who have a very specific need to learn a skill or a practice that they can apply in their existing research projects. The enabler track is aimed at people who are in roles that support other researchers and students to learn digital and computational skills. The last track, educator, is for people wanting to develop training material that is contextualized to the South African audience. This program is still under development and we realize that it's a very ambitious um, program but we're at the moment figuring out how to implement and roll this out and we will definitely be partnering with existing programs to not duplicate and reinvent the wheel. In April 2021 we hosted the mentorship in Daba where we invited representatives from eight mentorship programs to learn from them about how they rolled out their programs and about the lessons that they've learned. The programs that were represented include Open Life Science Project, the Zindi Mentorship Program, the Core Africa Research Mentorship Scheme, She Code Africa, One Data, the Deep Learning in Daba, Open Education for a Better World, and Youth Mappers. 
the event included presentations by each of these programs and open time for discussion. There's a blog post on our website with the link below where you can find recorded talks as well as the presentation slide, slides. The event was really exciting and we learned so much from each other. And as you can see, everybody who participated also felt that it was very valuable for them to learn from other mentorship programs. We hope to continue this conversation over the next months to learn even more from each other. And we'll be sharing more about this um, in the upcoming months. As you can see, there's still a lot of questions about how to develop this program, how to do the best we can in terms of growing people's skills and not only letting them participate in ad hoc opportunities. And we would really like to hear from you. What projects should we know about? Would you like to be involved? Are there challenges that you can identify that you already have solutions for? Would you like to list your organization, training opportunities or resources on our, on our website? Please follow us on Twitter at DHCSAZA and let us know or email us at escalator at Thank you very much.